Ring the bell for Pell Mell. Pell Mell. Pell Mell. Pell Mell. Pell Mell famous cigarettes, the cigarette of modern design, presents the Jack Benny program with Mary Livingston, Bill Harris, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> For Pell Mell. Yes, friends, Pell Mell rings the bell for you in smoothness, coolness, and better taste. Your eye tells why. Just make this test for yourself. The next time you see a Pell Mell smoker try to light an old fashioned short cigarette, watch what he does. You'll find that he holds the flame a good half inch beyond the tip of the short cigarette. Of course, he's looking for something that isn't there. He's looking for Pell Mell's modern design. Modern design means Pell Mell is longer. From the very first puff, Pell-Mell's greater length travels the smoke further, diminishes heat and bite on the way, filters the smoke naturally over a 20% longer route of Pell-Mell's traditionally fine tobaccos. Yes, friends, modern design means Pell-Mell is smoother, cooler, a better tasting smoke. That's modern design. Pell-Mell's modern design. And that's the answer. That's why Pell-Mell rings the bell. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Easter Sunday. So let's turn back the clock one day and take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills where we find Jack trying to decide on what clothes to wear in the Easter parade. Mary is helping him. Oh, sweet Georgia Brown. Gosh, I... Mary, I don't know what to wear tomorrow. My gray suit is at the cleaners. Uh, well, what about the green suit you wore yesterday? That's my gray suit. That's why it's at the cleaners. <laughs> You know, it always turns green in the spring. You know. <laughs> la, 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 Gee, Mary, I'm glad you dropped in. What shall I wear tomorrow? Jack, Easter only comes once a year. Why don't you buy yourself a new suit? Well. You can afford it, you know. Well. For heaven's sake, Jack, it's not such a big decision. I know, but with my luck, I'll buy a new suit today, and tomorrow I'll be drafted. <laughs> Well, now I've heard everything. You drafted? Yes, me. Jack, they stopped drafting beer, and that had a better body than you have. <laughs> Don't be so funny, Mary. I'm in pretty good condition. Oh, yeah? Well, I got a surprise for you. Why? I was doing some volunteer work at the local draft board, and I saw your file. You did? What was my classification? I didn't notice that, but yours is the only card there trimmed in black. <laughs> Mary All the other cards are written Yours is engraved Mary And in the corner it says Keep off the grass Now cut that out If you want to help me pick out a suit to wear All right If not you can... There's someone at the door Yes uh, Pardon me Are you the owner of this house? Yes, why? You better fix that broken cement On your sidewalk what? I was just walking by here with my wife and she tripped and fell. Oh, that's terrible. Worse than that, it could have been me. <laughs> what? It's a lucky thing I'm nimble. Well, I hope your wife isn't hurt and I'm sorry it happened. Then you admit it happened. Huh? You're under oath, you know. What? I'm suing you. Suing me? $25,000. $25,000? Now, wait a minute. You can't sue me. And why not? You gotta have witnesses. How do I know your wife tripped and fell on my sidewalk? You gotta show me I'm from Missouri. Well, take off that Wilkie button. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> I don't care where you're from and get out of here. All right, all right. Don't get excited. You can't blame a guy for trying. 
All right, honey, you can get up now. We'll try the next street. <laughs> Are you cheap, Chisler? Go on, beat it. Isn't that guy coming here to sue me because of that hole in my sidewalk? Well, that's what you get for neglecting things. That walk has been broken a long time. I know it, Mary. I bought some cement a couple of months ago, but I never got around to fixing it. Well, you better get it done before something really happens. I guess you're right. Oh, Rochester! Rochester! Just a minute, boss. I'm busy. What are you doing? Coloring some Easter eggs. Oh, that's good. Did you boil them first? No, boss. I fried them. <laughs> Fried them? Then what are you coloring them with? Ketchup! <laughs> Rochester, stop eating those eggs and come in here. That guy eats everything. Doesn't he know that food is rationed? He ought to. It's been rationed in this house for 12 years. <laughs> it has not. What is it, boss? Uh, Rochester, I want you to go out in front and cement that broken piece of sidewalk. Cement? Yes. You mean a cement job? Certainly. Boss, when you hired me for your butler, I read the contract very carefully. Well? And the word cement, cemented or cementing, does not appear even in the small print. <laughs> what? Or in section three, clause eight, which is written in Egyptian hieroglyphics. <laughs> oh, it doesn't, eh? No. Rochester, how many pages are there in our contract? Seventy-six, including the index, appendix, and list of illustrations. <laughs> All right, and what are those pages held together with? You got me, boss. It's cement. <laughs> I know what I'm doing every minute. Now, Rochester, let's go out in the garage, grab the tools, and get started. <laughs> Breaking out these old pieces is hard work. Rochester, have you got the cement mixed yet? Yes, sir. Doggone it, boss. You sure are perspiring. Yeah, this is hard work. I haven't seen you sweat like that since you were on information, please. <laughs> Rochester, I was never a guest on information, please. Oh, that's right. I must have been thinking of Fred Allen. No, no, boss, forgive me. Forgive me. I didn't mean that. <laughs> How could I have mentioned that name when you got a hammer in your hand? You shouldn't mention it anyway. Remember, Article 7, Section, section 19, 19 clause 8, 8, page, page 12. 12. And unfortunately held together with cement. That's right. Say, boss, I think you could make a straighter edge on that sidewalk if you use the chisel. Yeah, I guess I could. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hand me that chisel, Rochester. Thanks. How are you, Mr. Benny? Fine, fine. Have you read any good books lately? <laughs> no, no. Rochester, keep mixing that cement so it won't settle. Okay, boss. What are you doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What do you think I'm doing? Planting a victory garden? <laughs> Look, Dennis, why in the world would I plant a victory garden on a cement sidewalk? So you won't have to tear up your lawn. <laughs> Look, kid, there was a hole here and a lady tripped and fell in it, so I'm trying to fix it. Oh. Now, don't bother me. I'm busy. Okay. Hey, Mr. Benny. Not now, Dennis. Mr. Benny. Dennis, please. But, Mr. Benny. For goodness sake, Dennis, what is it? You've got the chisel on my foot. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Did I, uh, did I hurt you, kid? No, it went between my toes. <laughs> well, I'm glad it didn't hurt you. Now, Dennis, will you please do me a favor and go in the house and talk to Miss Livingston? We gotta finish this job. Okay, I'll go in and rehearse my song for tomorrow's broadcast. Good, good. There, Roger, the space is all cleared out now. Will you pour the cement in? Okay. Good. Now I'll smooth it over with the trowel. Boy, this is really work. <laughs> Rochester, what's so funny? Both of us playing in the mud here, we look like Topsy and Eva. <laughs> yeah, we do at that. Hey, Jack, Jack. 
What is it, Mary? Dennis going to rehearse his song for tomorrow. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, leave the window open. Okay. Now, Rochester, you smooth that corner over near you, and I'll level this part over here. <laughs> through, Rochester. How does the cement job look? Boss, you're wonderful. That's the best thing I've ever seen. Yes, sir. Hmm. And they gave Paul Lucas the Academy Award. <laughs> It'll look even better, Rochester, when I give it the finishing touches. Say, here comes Mr. Harris and Mr. Wilson. Where? Oh, hello, fellas. Hello, Jack. Hey, Jackson, what'd you lose? I didn't lose anything. I'm cementing the sidewalk. Oh, well, it's about time. The other night I passed by here and stubbed my knee. <laughs> You mean they're getting the joke already? <laughs> Phil, you, you stubbed your toe. I stubbed my knee. I was coming home from a party. <laughs> oh, well, why didn't you come in? I couldn't. Alice had me on a leash. <laughs> That's very funny, Phil. Now, stand back while I... Don! Don, get away from my cement with that stick. What were you going to do? I was only going to write, Donald loves grape nuts. Don, I don't care how much you love grape nuts, you're not going to advertise your romance on my sidewalk. How would you like it if you had just cemented your sidewalk and I wrote in it, Jackie loved Gladys Zabisco? Well, I, I wouldn't mind if uh, she was malt rich, sweet as a nut, and had that whole grain nourishment. Yes. I wouldn't mind if you didn't have a frog in your throat, either. <laughs> you know, Don, if you ask me, I think you're silly. I think he's cute. <laughs> Huh? What? You remember me? I'm Herman Peabody, the insurance salesman. Oh, yes, yes. You belong to the carpool with my gang. I didn't see you standing there behind Mr. Wilson. I couldn't see you either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I understand, Herman. What you doing? Oh, there was a hole here and a lady trip, so... <laughs> a hole here, a lady trip, so I'm fixing it. Oh, now, Rochester... You know, that's very dangerous, Mr. Benny. You could be sued for a thing like that. Yes, Herman, I know. We have a very liberal insurance policy that covers all that. It only costs $10 a year, and if you trip and fall, you collect a million dollars. <laughs> a million dollars? <laughs> Herman, you mean I'd collect a million dollars if I tripped and fell? That's right. Gee. Only you have to be hit by lightning at the same time. <laughs> by 
my lightning? On Tuesday at half past three. <laughs> uh, what? Bull of a watch time. <laughs> oh, fine. Imagine, imagine putting in a provision that you have to be hit by lightning. I wouldn't take out that kind of a policy. Oh, I don't blame you, Mr. Benny. You look silly wearing it in your hat. Wearing what in my hat? No chances. <laughs> look, fellas, I gotta finish my job here. Why don't you go in the house and take Herman with you? Okay. You'll find Dennis and Mary inside. See you later, Jackson. Now, Rochester, just a little more smoothing out here, and we're all through. Hand me that... Uh... Oh, here comes somebody, boss. I better take some of these tools off the sidewalk. Yeah, I don't want anyone to trip on them. Now, pardon me. Boss, look up. Look up, it's Mr. Basil Rathbone. Where? Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Rathbone. Uh, Basil, it's me, Jack Benny. I'm, uh, I'm doing a little cement job. So I see. I didn't think you'd last long in radio. <laughs> I'm, I'm only cementing the sidewalk because it's an emergency. That's all. That's right, Mr. Benny, still on the radio. No, oh, some soap program? No, no, food. Breakfast food. I see. Well fed, but dirty. Hmm? <laughs> Just a minute. Did you say I'm dirty? That's what he said. That's what the man said. He said that. <laughs> Rochester, please. I, I guess, Mr. Rathbone, you just said that because right now my clothes are covered with cement. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Thanks. I bet you're surprised that I'm capable of fixing a sidewalk like this. Oh, no, no, not at all. I've seen you in pictures, and I realize you must be able to do something. <laughs> Well, look, uh, Mr. Rathbone, I've followed your career for years, and if I remember correctly, you've never won an Academy Award. Have you? No, but nobody sees my pictures. What's your excuse? <laughs> I guess that'll hold you for a while. Oh, say, Mr. Battlebone, is somebody following you? <laughs> Where? No, 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 that, um, that's my butler. You mean you make your butler walk along the street with you? Oh, yes, he doesn't mind. He's very democratic, aren't you, James? If uh, you say so, sir. Well, I say so, James. Uh, thank you, sir. Rochester, uh, gather up the tools. If you say so, sir. <laughs> now cut that out and stop curtsying. <laughs> please. Oh, Mr. Rathbone, sir, should I fill your pipe again? Now, uh, yes, James, please do. There you are. May I give you a light now? Yes, James. There you are, sir. My, my, this tobacco is strong. Uh, James, a cuff for me, will you? Yes, sir. <coughs> <laughs> what? Once again, please. <coughs> you feel better now, sir? Uh, yes, thank you. Mr. Rathbone, do you have your butler cough for you? Yes, sir. With my heavy uh, schedule in pictures, I can't afford to strain my throat. Hmm. Oh, Rochester. <laughs> Rochester. I know, boss. I'm going to catch a cold so I can practice. Good. I'll audition you later. It's not a bad idea. Oh, James. Yes, master. I think we've dallied long enough with this dilly. Let's bounce along, shall we? If you say so, sir. Toodaloo. Hmm, how do you like a guy like that? Who does he think he is, anyway? Oh, Jack! Yes, Mary? We're getting hungry. How about some sandwiches? Okay. Rochester, you work pretty hard out here. Yes, boss. Come on inside and make some sandwiches. If you say so, sir. Wait till the gang sees what a nice, smooth job I did with that cement. I'm really proud of it. Have they... Have they gone into the house yet? Yes, master. And if I may say so, you have a funny gleam in your eye. What's up, sir? That wet cement on the sidewalk. I can't resist it, James. For years, I've wanted my footprints in cement of Grauman's Chinese Theater, but I've never had the chance. Oh, I've been ashamed of it, too, sir. But now, now Jack Benny, unknowingly, has given me the opportunity to put my feet in cement. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, just look at it. So fresh and nice and soft. Here, James, James, hold my shoes. Yes, sir. And, and wait a minute, here, here are my socks. Yes, sir. You'd better let me hold your arch supports, too. 
<laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes, by all means. Ah, now to put my feet firmly in this wet cement. Uh, would you like me to test it first with my elbow? James, I only want to stand in it, not sit in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Now, the left foot first. <laughs> and now the right. Oh, James. You haven't lived until you've had the thrill of having wet cement ooze up between your toes. <laughs> If you don't mind, sir, I'll stick to my blue jay. Are you enjoying yourself, sir? You've no idea, James. It's wonderful. <laughs> now I shall remove my feet. <laughs> ah, just look at those beautiful footprints. Come on outside, kids. I want you to see it. Oh, master, master, I think they're coming back. Let's run. Yes, James, hurry. I'll show you the best cement job you've ever seen. I'm really proud of it. Oh, pulling your chest. It's almost out to your stomach. Well, what if, what if it is? I don't blame you for being proud, Jack. You worked hard on it. Well, there she is, kids. Take a good look. Yike! <laughs> what happened, Jackson? What happened? Look at the cement. Look, somebody put their footprints in it. And look at the size of them. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder where the other footprints are. What other footprints? Anything that has feet that big must have two more to go with them. You're not kidding. I wonder who stuck their big feet in my cement. I can't understand it. My mother's in Cleveland. <laughs> this is the dirtiest trick that has ever been played on me. Who could have done it? Why, there wasn't anybody around when... Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter, Jack? Basil Rathbone. Basil Rathbone was here just a few minutes ago. Well, why would he do a thing like that? Yeah, why would he do it? That could be the reason. <laughs> I don't care what his reason is. I'm going over to Rathbone's house and punch him right in the nose. I don't blame you, Jackson. I'm going to punch him in the nose, too. After me. Don't argue about it, fellas. He's got enough nose for all of us. <laughs> anyway, I'm not afraid of him. You guys wait here, and I'll handle this myself. They don't come too big for me. <laughs> Yes? Tell Mr. Rathbone I want to see him. You remember me. Oh, yes. Yes, you're the cement worker. <laughs> I'm Jack Benny, the movie star. If you say so, sir. <laughs> well, I say so, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, tell Mr. Rathbone I want to see him. Yes, sir. Wait right here, please. I'm not waiting for anything. I'm coming in right now. Oh, Mr. Rathbone. Mr. Rathbone. Yes, Jim? Wipe off your feet, sir. Here he comes. Oh, no, you don't, Rathbone. I've caught you red-handed, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. But, Jack... Imagine a man of your position in the community doing a thing like that. But, Jack... Sticking your big feet in my cement. What have you got to say for yourself? Jack, I... I know it'll be difficult for you to understand, but it's a phobia with me. When I see cement, something happens to me. Something comes over me. Something... something seems to snap inside me. Basil. I can't control myself, Jack. Please believe me. I fight against it. But it has me in its vicious, unrelenting power, and no matter what I try to do, it overwhelms me. <laughs> Basil, control yourself. It isn't that serious. Yes, it is. You're only being kind to me. But, Basil, if it bothers you that much, you can come back and help me fix the cement. Oh, Jack, I will. I will. Oh, this is so kind of you, so generous of you. I don't deserve it. Basil. I don't deserve anything. I'm a cad. I'm a scoundrel. Basil. I, I should be horsewhipped. <laughs> Basil. Oh, why? Why did I do it? Basil, calm yourself. Just come over and help me fix it. For heaven's sake, Jack, will you, will you wait till I finish my scene? You've seen? You mean, you mean you're just acting now? Certainly. You're not the only one who hates Paul Lucas. <laughs> Basil, you too? Yes, pal. Well, what do you know? Come here, chum. I want to talk to you. Imagine giving Lucas the Academy Award for one scene where he left his home and said farewell to Betty Davis. Oh, oh brother. You said it. Ring the bell for Pell Mell. 
Yes, here, there, wherever particular people congregate, you see the smart red pell-mell package. Day after day, the demand for this smart, distinctive, better-tasting cigarette is growing. Yes, it's easy to tell the swings to pell-mell. And no wonder, the moment you take a pell-mell out of the package, you see why pell-mell means a smoother, cooler, better-tasting smoke. Instantly, you see pell-mell's greater length. That's modern design. Now, light up a pell-mell and see what happens. Pell-mell's modern design travels the smoke further, filters it naturally over a 20% longer route of pell-mell's traditionally fine tobaccos. Heat and bite are diminished. Yes, modern design is a difference you can see. Modern design means a difference you can taste. Modern design means pell-mell is longer. Modern design means pell-mell smokes cooler. That's why Pell-Mell rings the bell for you in smoothness, coolness, and better taste. So swing into line with modern design. The next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Pell-Mell in the smart red package. Ring the bell for Pell-Mell. 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 Ah, good night, everybody. This is the National Broadcasting